right into the first game. Peak Warcraft Invitational, $6,720 on the line. Sky, Fly, Colorful, and 15th Sway for China, Moon, Focus, Sock, and Lukael for Korea. And we kick things off with a one-on-one -on -one between Colorful and Lukael. It's a Night Elf versus Undead. Of course, everything here, best of one. And whoever gains more points in the progress of this clan war match will win easy as it gets so let's kick this off everybody colorful versus lucy i hope that everything is fine there we go <clears throat> and we got colorful on the right hand side in the red of course for china and we got Lucy for South Korea in the bottom left-hand side of things. Already rushing over with the ghoul. Lucy, of course, uh, known to do these ghoul pulls and ghoul rushes on maps like Amazonia. And that requires, of course, a second necropolis, which is immediately what he gets because the ghoul is supposed to harvest lumber in the early uh, moments. So who's going to take the lead or who did take the lead as it is a... Uh, replay cast, as I said. Thank you, Zord Eater, for the Prime Sub, and Joyson123 as well for the Prime Sub. Love you guys. This ghoul pull mm, was about to say not too effective, but he cancelled the Ancient of War. What an accomplishment right off the bat. We all know how important it is to delay the Demon Hunter's progress, and if you can't creep, then what do you want to do? So this ghoul push pull thingy very successful already colorful his idea of course race DH He loves to play a demon hunter, but This is tricky. So will Lucy follow this up? With the second crypto or not is the question Already tons of things happening at the two minute mark round about the two minute mark And so far, Lucy can be very, very happy with the accomplishments here. Not even sure who was, the, who was the favorite going into this. And very excited to cast a 4 and 4. Never done this before in my life, I think. Or at least not in recent uh, history. Demon Hunter Harass is the only thing that he can do, basically. As there is no units, no Ancient of War in the foreseeable future. But Lucy has no lot of necromancy because of this build. Maybe he miscalculated that a little bit. Only finishing now. So he can't creep with ghouls, of course, but skeletons too important, too effective. And what happens now? Whoa! Sacrificial skull, rod of necromancy, next acolyte. This is an expansion play, everybody. And why not? There is a tech happening, but no hunt to Saul. No second Ancient of War. A player's forces are under attack. Why not? Colorful checks out, like, where are you going? What are you doing? Okay, you're not at your natural, then you must be here. And he absolutely is, but not much surface area for any kind of steel. And yeah, every single second here now prevents the leveling of the Demon Hunter. Very good! I like it. Now, Lucy, if you can surround the Demon Hunter, force a town portal, that is a 100% safe expansion for... Well, until the mid-game. Double Ziggurat, of course, immediately cancelled thanks to the piercing damage, but that is a tension that won't go to ghouls and or DK. We've got level 2 now, and that makes the ghouls a lot faster, makes surrounding a lot easier. Oh, and nature is helping against the Night Elf. The tree is closing this surround. Wisp was ready for a big detonate, but nice movement by Lucy thus far. Korea, of course, the current world champions when it comes to uh, country competition. Defeated Germany in the grand final. So very swiftly, actually. So Ogre still up, but we finally see a haunted gold mine. We finally see a ziggurat. Lucy's got to be careful because Mana Burn can steal, doesn't. And that then... Wait, did he steal it with an archer? Oh my god, colorful. Yeah, DK definitely missed out on that last hit. Because he was level 2 a lot earlier, and that Ogre Major gives a lot of experience. So sick, sick, sick play by colorful. 
I'm becoming more and more a fan of Colorful, especially in this matchup, also in mirror matches, even though it's not that flashy. Problem? He forgot the Hunter Saw. So the lures will be very, very late, but he's following it up with an expansion of his own. Panda, obviously the choice. And Lucy, still struggling to get that expo up, has the tech rolling. It's of course nice, thanks to his double necro build. So you can tech and produce acolytes at the same time. A player's force but that panda back. can't level. Same issue as the demon hunter. Lucky break, at least a little bit, for Colorful here, that Lucy is not checking the right hand side, because it's a very unusual positioning. For that expansion. And so that goes by. Expo, saturated, DK, okay levels, nothing extraordinary I want to say. No second crypt still, despite the four, floating 400 gold. Maybe an indicator that he doesn't want to go Gargs. But yeah, time for some creeping now, time to level up all possible heroes here. Lucy maybe a staff. There's a third Necropolis. Okay, is that really worth it? Second crypt now, but still for Gargs you need like three or four crypts. So this should be fiends then. Cranka, Adito, thank you for your prime subs, everybody. Cranka already for 58 months. And there's the third crypt. Alrighty, Gargs it is. As he sees, wait, the panda is only level one. Well, that opens the door for gargoyles. Very, very rare. You see that especially from Asian pros. This is something you might see from a Krav. He loves to play the gargs. But Lucy, old school, played this in 2004, 5, 6. Still playing it now. And Colorful expansion is so late. Seven minutes in. Gargs are coming. Tier 3 is coming. But levels are most important. And he doesn't have that. For Lucy... Everything is nice to have, like level 2 coil, aura, lich levels, but most important is mass units. Mass gargs, mass ghouls, whatever you build, build it in masses. And so not that dependent on levels, I would say. Of course, you don't want to feed too much to your opponent, but rest is fine. And the Gargs are here. Oh, damn! A blast from the past from Lucy. And Colorful struggling to get some experience. <coughs> Not having level 2 or level 3 here. Sh could enable some coils. We are, of course, on Nettie's, as you can see from the zoom. So, this is the old Autumn Leaves. Breath of Fire, finally level 2. And there should be a way to evacuate, even though this wolf is making things quite a bit harder. Dust on the ground. Hello. That's yours. Next deal. For Lucy. So, not the full experience. Item on the ground. A little wonky. Rune braces, though. Mmm. Good start. For Lukail. But Colorful, this game could have gone sideways two to three times already. So good fighting spirit, knowing his win condition is the late game, especially when it's two ways, two ways. If you buy more time, there's no Gark Harass at all. And that usually, hello level three, that Gark Harass usually disables the ability to go for more and more Gargoyle, uh, Dryads, which then threaten your Gargoyles. And so Colorful, can basically build an army, can creep whatever he wants. So that's kind of fine. Now he gets the levels two, level three already there, and I'm struggling to find the mass. Three crypt into, oh, fiend transition now. Yeah, the gogs didn't work out really, no big impact. Despite the expo, despite the triple crypt, there wasn't even an AP. Maybe not playing into the power spike that this build could have given him. 
but it was more important to Lucy to keep the levels low instead of harassing the expansion. And I'm not too sure if he knows about this expansion at all. I think he saw it though. Tier 3 on the way. A little bit supply blocked. 400 gold. There is definitely potential for a big undead push to come. And what Lucy is also not doing, keeping Colorful busy. He wanted to prevent the levels, but he failed. So he got the worst of both worlds, allowed the economy, allowed the Night Elf to creep. And now he's facing a strong economy. He's facing strong heroes. And the rest of the game is not going to be easy for him. But yeah, ghouls, especially with Frenzy, which is on the way. Very powerful damage. Not at max. Because at one point he switched from Gogs to Fiends. Demon Hunter's trying to find his opponent. He's so tanky. Gonna be very, very tough to kill. Town Portal, Staff. He's gotta be careful to not get surrounded, but there is a Staff on the other side, so no Dreadlord. For the sleep. But yeah, if you play Fiends, Dreadlord makes little to no sense. It's gonna be the typical late game army. Fiends, Destroyers, DK, Lich. And Colorful is already getting ready for mass air. Bears and hippos. But he has to keep that second base up. The Frenzy Ghoul push. <laughs> Shrimp Rundung. Thank you for the four month resub, mate. So, Tinker third. Wow. With a pocket factory build. I'm not too sure if that's the right call. It will have little impact now. And will soak up experience. So the Coil Nova is not going to be that powerful. Roar and Reacher. There's only one destroyer. So you can just dispel so much. And full speed into a wall. No web yet as it seems. Tinker, no impact. Gargoyles, no impact. And now, good effort, luck. Keep that air army alive against all the hippos. Heal scroll was kind of nice, but immediately countered by Drunken Haze, Breath of Fire. Demon Hunter is back in the saddle. No chance to coil that Tinker, of course. And running away against Dryads is a mission impossible. Feeding these heroes big time. At least a coil to save that fiend. But that was not a good trade for Lucy at all. He's still at 70. It's not that bad. But the levels of Colorful are getting scary. 70 supply for him too. And it's a lot about items next. They're building a second... Uh, a second? Second base? A third base? A player's forces are under attack. Oh man. Demon Hunter now with a warp. Ring of Reach and Ring of Protection Rune Braces. What a raid boss. Yeah, that was not Lucy's engagement at all. Miscalculating the situation. Maybe the item can help. Oh, oh no. And Colorful finds him again. You gotta applaud Colorful for not giving up this game early. Getting his early game disrupted with that ghoul. Everything being so late. Huntress Hall forgotten. But he got that opening by passive... Garg play, Kaliosa, thank you for the sub. Um, passive Garg play, and this fight here, plus the two camps in the middle that both went to Colorful. So, I guess she was on the other foot now. We finally have a level 4 DK and level 3 Lich. That was absolutely necessary. But this is Colorful's win condition. Third base. Once the Demon Hunter gets level 4, he's basically unkillable. Big Invo Potion too. <laughs> what do you think about that Tinker choice? It is a lot of fiends here. 2-0 against the 1-0 on Colorful side. 
So for once he doesn't have that upgrade advantage because he had to go for levels. But it, it's a lot of fiends against a lot of hippos. Even the shredder is coming in. And now we need some strong kiting and strong focus fire. DK has heal scrolls, mana potions, double heal scroll actually. First A-bomb is in. But statues out of position. Drunken hates breath of fire. Double kill on the fiend and... That was probably not the last one. Again, Lucy is the one kiting, but he's just kiting and he's not doing damage. Where's the stutter stepping? The damage uptime for the undead is lousy. And that's level four now. The Dryad's untouched, no wagon to attack the backline. <clears throat> and the Panda's just tearing Lucy apart. Not too much experience, actually. Maybe he was out of the fight when the kills happened, or most of the kills happened. Demon Hunter is level 4 now, and damn. Colorful pulls back. Very surprised that Lucy is still at 68. Loses another fiend here. And that was all distraction for that base against an almost maxed out Colorful. Got double wind, can replace it. Nice staffs. Yeah, Disease Cloud is working now. That's kind of annoying. Are you doing classic Warcraft casts again? This was played this weekend, but we were just not around, so we do it now. forces are under attack. The Tinker is kind of nice as a third heal scroll carry, I guess. But that's what he does, right? Carrying and activating items. A bomb intercepted. Getting attacked with poison as well. Whew. Endurance aura. That, for this kind of game, is almost the perfect item. Because you want more movement speed. And you get more movement speed with endurance aura. Also more attack speed. But the way Lucy was fighting, I don't see that impacting the game too much, actually. Three bases for the Chinese. This looks very, very good. More upgrades coming in. Defensive this time. 3-0. Oh. And maybe we're reaching a territory where Lucy can fight again. 80 supply, 443 heroes. Good items. What do we have on the side of Colorful? No Chimera transition or anything against Abominations. No level 5 anywhere. Game is slightly... Like, in all regards but economy, slightly going back into neutral territory. But yeah, that third hero. If not for the Tinker, this would be 5-5 five, five heroes. How much is it? 550 experience. Ah, we would have at least a level 5 DK. But all right, let's see if Lucy can break it now. In the third attempt, Drunken Haze, Breath of Fire, countered by a heal scroll immediately. Tinker far forward, and the bears are reaching the fiends. This is never supposed to happen. Abomination is soaking up quite some damage, but this is where the kiting game begins. Level five panda bringing the heat. And I think he's soon to be running out of heal scrolls and also on health on the DK. Can he reach once more? All the fiends. Oh no. One down. This could have been even worse. And it's not looking good for Lucy at all. Did Colorful lose any anything? Did he lose anything in this game? I'm not so sure. <coughs> I 
Now this kind of fight where it's so micro dependent, maybe not the style of Lucy. Not on a level of one to zero or happy, of course. And this is very, very taxing. Pull a unit back, then attack and Lucy oftentimes pulling the entire army back. Heal scroll again available against the disease cloud. Only one every, I don't know, two minutes or so. Another fiend intercepted. And all that dies is hippos. So we go into mass destroyer territory. DK close to five gets it now. But I think the panda is just a hard carry, isn't he? DK can't decide whether to go in or out. Demon Hunter can be staffed, soaking up so much damage in the destroyers. There's so many destroyers, there's still roar. Now there's good focus fire, but DK in trouble, Tinker in trouble. And Colorful is getting closer and closer to victory here as the army is just diminished. Level 5, mana burn immediately, no more coil, another TP, but I think Lucy will see it himself that this is game and it absolutely is. Colorful taking the 104 Team China. And I thank Bururush for the 100 bits. Hello, hello, hello. With that, 1 0 for China. But this was a series where I think China was heavily favored. Let's take a look <clears throat> at the rest of the lineup. 15 Sway versus Focus, depending on what race 15 Sway is playing. Um, I would give the edge to focus a little bit. Fly versus Sock very much depend on how well Fly is prepared. I think he has a shot, but not if he's a little rusty and Sock is in tip-top shape. But there's a lot of game tape. Fly is a good uh, student when it comes to meta. So, And Colorful versus Focus is basically 50-50. Orc Slayer versus Night Elf Slayer. Love it. And then in the 4-on-4, four four, of course, who can predict a 4-on-4? Four four? I wouldn't know. So, I sent you guys into a small little break and we're back in three minutes. Alright, round 2, 1-0 lead for China. Korea about to strike back with Focus being the favorite against his opponent. 15 Sway, only a little bit of a favorite. 15 Sway is not bad. At all when it comes to this matchup. Lucy tried to do something cheeky, but didn't really work out too well for him, I guess. So now Focus may be the strongest player in all of uh, Korea in this match. And he's gonna be playing twice, so definitely a chance to claim it. It's a Blade Master build, of course, as it always is against Night Elf. And 15 Sway, not going into Talons, as I was hoping, seeing this match happen on Last Refuge. Uh, Focus will be up against Colorful in the process of this match. So there is a chance for some other play, but 15 Sway, of course, also part of the Lao Pao Esports Club a couple of years ago. Focus is former teammate. Focus knows 15 Sway. 15 Sway knows Focus. And since 15 Sway is a hybrid player between Night Elf and Human, might not have the ins and outs down so much to play Demon Hunter, Talons, etc. So I can understand that Keeper play. But the map is a lot smaller than you initially want it to be. And so the Blade Master can harass quite a bit. Vision Sway rather on the colorful side of things. Not tricky, not going for APs most of the time. Just rather late game fights. Also very tier 2 heavy usually. So Focus has not much to fear, I feel. Wind of Illusion for scouting. Sees the Keeper. Gotta keep it safe. And 15 Sway rather aggressive, attacking with level 1. Peon scouting for an expansion here, illusion scouting as well, lots of vision for focus. Sweating while watching Warcraft is officially my workout for the day. Same! <coughs> Mosh Pit workout Tuesday, casting workout Thursday. And so this is 
only tier one at the three minute mark. No indicator of an expansion yet, just a hidden archer. Peon scouting again, like, is there something brewing? Oh, there is an AP! <laughs> Sneaky, didn't see that, but focus did, and that's most important. Yeah, this doesn't look too successful. Tech is already rolling halfway for focus. And how is it that he's still tier one? It's like quite a blunder on 15 sway side, to be honest. Also, level one. Was he banking so hard on the fact that this AP is not getting scouted when there is... Well, it's focus, first and foremost, and he got a Wand of Illusion. Not sure. Could expand on the spot, this will save some time. But the lack of Alchemist and lack of upgrades will certainly hurt. In the meantime, some leveling the AP. A little bit of creeping here as well. Decent inventory for the blade, as well as a finished tier 2. This was quite fast. <coughs> most importantly, or, or not most importantly, but very important, <coughs> shutting down that creeping at the 12 o'clock. That delays level 3. That enables him, or disables the Shadow Priest. And this is just Focus's game. Sending the blade over, using grunts at, like, his side of the map, cancelling expansions and entangles, entangled gold mines. That's just what Focus does best. Mirror image too, and with that gets the cancel. Remo was right all along. This is a nasty early game for 15 Sway. No levels, no army, no expo. And Focus is getting his Shadow Hunter out, Brute Strength, Shaman. It's uh, not the easiest game to come back in 2 for 15 Sway. But once you unlock level 2 Entangled, there is potential to come back. As there is of course potential for South Korea in general to get back into this clan war. Really nasty early game, it was just an expansion cancel. It's a 6 minute 30 tier 2. Ah, not willing to go for another mirror image once he has... Or, oh, uh, there is no staff anymore. Okay, so maybe the second expansion will come up. Shadowhunter starts leveling, but since he did that green... Shadowhunter has to walk a little bit. He's not going into tier 2. He just reached tier 2. I don't know what you're talking about, mate. So, good arrest by 15 Sway. But still, would love to have level 3. Maybe he can steal it here. But Alchemist... Kinda late, but it's good to to have some map presence at the bottom now to slow down the Shadow Hunter. That's the move that he can do while defending with a lot in the north to keep the expansion safe. And then he has all the tool he needs. Everything from here on out is bonus. Second engine of war will come up most likely for mass. Shadow Hunter a little bit delayed. Huh? No, I don't think the damage is enough. So you know, all, all good, mate. All good. <laughs> oh, Shadow Hunter intercepted again. Gets the last hit, though. But now we have to face level 2 Entangle. There is limited amount of purge against that. But you kind of want to save the mana for Layla for when you push. But this expansion is still not mining 8 minutes in. Would really love to see a staff on the Blade Master, but maybe if you invest into Mirror Image already, that's enough. Players 
And once the like the expo was cancelled once, the entangled gold mine will be cancelled once. Such a big delay. Yeah, focus place is almost picture perfect. Banana Max, thank you for the tier one sub. So glad for Walker of Three to still be going strong. Thanks for casting because the resources are so helpful for getting tilted on the Wolf Champions ladder. I'm happy to support the cause. Thank you. Ooh, scroll of the beast committed. Interesting. He didn't hit the blade master. Maybe it is an overcommitment, but with some crowd control and with low level healing, there might be an opening here, level two on the serpent wards now. And it's getting quite hard for 15 Sway to engage into this, into the choke, into the serpent wards. Shadowhunter took some damage. Scroll of the beast was committed. Maybe a little premature. Well, that is maybe time for the expo to come up. He didn't mine a single dive at the 9.30 mark. Finally get some additional income. But for focus, this is more than fine. He's preparing the bottom right expansion for him. Numbers for 15 sway I don't think are that overwhelming to be honest. But if he focuses the hero that might change. Blade Master in trouble. But if he gets some Serpent Wards out, which he might be doing here, went of mana stealing against it, not too bad. But usually you want to have a decent amount of archers, which he does, but also with upgrades, which he doesn't have. And Speed Scroll committed, not going for the Alchemist, there's not much damage really. Grunts are falling, but he's trading for archers, for hunters, gets probably another, no, goes for the hero. Forcing a town portal, that's the info potion to break out of that entangle. Forces the town portal with another hunt. Yes, lasted off the chakram. Well, the twin blade knife thingy. But focus, let's go. Not pushing forward. He has some vision here still. Knows there's no mining going on because there was some good damage on that tree and 15 sway. Has to prioritize that. Invul stolen from the right hand side. Shop to be able to break out of Entangle once again and get the Acid Bomb debuff gone. Oh, but True Shot Aura is of course amazing because 15 Sway, as I said, not very tier three heavy in his playstyle, so Potom would have been super late as a third orb carry and provider of auras. So this is quite some nice damage, plus one on every archer. We have a lot of archers, not as impactful as it once was, but what should really worry 15 Sway is hero levels. Level 4. Expo is up soon as well. Blade Master can pretty much be neglected at this point. It's just pressure arising. 15 Sway never got a real good moment in this game. After the initial expansion with his late tech. Weird timings, to be honest. Okay. Serpent Wards give XP too, so he's grinding the there a bit. Beastery, four and snare, and maybe even a Kodo. And I love this pendulum attack by focus. Always attacking where 15 Sway is not. So the Chinese pulls to the side, opens up another point of attack here. Shadow Hunter is a little exposed as there is no consumable on him. Only the Invo Potion, which he might need soon, but gets out of that focus fire with mirror image. But yeah, mana is low. I don't know if this is really Focus's fight. Gets level 3, couple of kills, but has to run now while 15 Sway deals with the snake sticks. So more force trades, more time where the orc expansion is not attacked. A town is under siege. A player's forces are under attack. And levels in favor of the orc. 
pretty much smooth sailing so far. And there's no big threat to focus if there's no tier 3. No marksmanship, no orbs. So, next attack is the better equipped this time. With the speed scroll and with the mana potion, for sure. But also the alchemist carries a heal scroll. Keeper, though, very exposed. How much pressure can you put on the tree? And can you defend this army? It's very likely that he's able to. Focus fire immediately on the berserker. Kills it off swiftly. There we go. Big boost of XP. And this is just focus all over. Still so many grunts. He can't deal with them. Because there was never enough archers with enough damage. And yeah, this is ridiculous. 48 supply. Grasping at straws here. Going for more, more mercenaries. But that should be it. The damage dealers are mostly gone. The blocker units are kind of useless as long as they're serpent wards. They just soak up damage. And this is just this is so much orc. A player's forces are under attack. Level 5 shadow. Yeah, good luck. Good luck fighting 50 damage serpent wards. And with mirror image and invul potions and heal wave. Hero focus on the blade mass is not possible. 141 critical strike. Ends the game in style. Boom! South Korea is back in the saddle. Ties up the series. 1-1. One, one. Whoopsie. And yeah, from the very beginning. Um, Last Refuge, really not the greatest keeper and mass map. Because it's very, very hard to reach the necessary levels for that. And this is why most Night Elves refrain from doing so. <coughs> and rather go Talons on this map. Or Veto this map. Not the case here. The AP push failed miserably. Tech was late. Expo was late. And cancelled two times. Focus just smooth sailing. And shout out to Collie Walk who got Everything about this game wrong in chat. Happens. Happens to me in cast as well. <clears throat> Still quite funny though. I'm not the biggest fan of 15 Sways matchup versus Orc to be honest. Feels like he's very one dimensional. And on the very high level, which means top two performers of each race, it seems to be a tricky matchup for Night Elf at the moment. Because Lin and Focus are demolishing Night Elf's left, right and center, even though on other levels it's a very, very different matchup, as we all know. But Lin lost exactly one series against Night Elf this year, and Focus... A uh, couple more, but since May, which is like six weeks, eight weeks, he only lost one series. So one series in eight weeks or in, in, in two months, Lin only one series in six months. That is quite impressive. Thank you, Ilmbi, for the 22 month resub. Get well soon, Remo. Right on. And Justin Dollars, thank you for the 4 month resub, expressing gratitude for your content! You guys are very much appreciated for keeping the scene going strong. Straight to the heart, mate! Straight to the heart! We're back with map 3, and the first one was Colorful defeating Lucy. Second one was Korea striking back with Focus defeating the young 15 Sway. And now it's time for these two juggernauts to appear. It is Fly versus Sock. Fly 
only there for special occasions. And of course, if Sky is inviting to a show match between China and Korea, that is a very, very special occasion. So we jump without further ado into the map. Who takes the lead? Is it China again or is it Korea for the first time? Lots of money on the line, of course, as we have a 6,000 something, $6,700 prize pool has to be divided by four to five of course if you win but four thousand dollars for the winner and if you take this now we have four one ones and one uh four and four so three points are enough for the win and now sock how good is he versus Zork at the moment i would say that he was quite outclassed last time i saw it but he's bouncing back a little bit and fly, maybe not in tip-top shape. Concealed Hill is the map, so chances for fast expansions rather low, I'd say. But Sock was the one who's stubbornly going for the fast expansion on the human side. And I'm uh, not too sure that's the right approach. We have a super fast tech with Farsi Harass on fly side. Always a pleasure seeing him play, to be honest. And if Sock is going for that expo and the Farseer can do some damage there, it's gonna be a tough game for Sock. If he can establish that or finds a way to reach tier 2 and level quite a bit, then it's also pretty good for Sock. So this matchup can go back and forth. Headhunters fell a little bit off the matter, thanks to the strength of uh, different. And we will see some headhunters, but then a rather quick transition, I'd say. Wolf in the main, no tower, quite exposed, quite fragile, this build by Sock, but seemingly working as he's almost as aggressive as it gets. And this is a glorious timing. If he gets the barracks, might be too far finished. Yeah, he's focusing on the fast here and maybe stealing XP away. But boy, if he could get the production building, that would be sweet. Feels like Sock is a little indecisive where to go for. Do I chase the fast here? Do I go for the racks? Do I go for the burrows? Do I go for the creeps? He wants level two, was not creeping at the same time. Maybe a little oversight, but he's getting. The Brilliance Aura now, Water Elemental Sun, that's the last one for a while. And last, it's so important. Can't, this is an investment <clears throat> of a lot of time and creep speed. So if he doesn't get the big turtle, almost a waste, but he did. And that leaves the fast at only 67. Wolf Harass is going decent-ish, but Sock is already answering with the Lumber Mill. Plus upgrade, plus, you know, very, very fast Lumber Income. Still, Fly is accomplishing something. Forces a tower, forces a lumber mill, and lumber is pretty miserable at the moment for Sock. If he had some plans to go for, I don't know, double sanctum, that's already delayed. So, good answer by Fly, with only wolves, basically. But now, everyone is quite hurt, takes a bath, radar, shaman. And that's a blacksmith, okay. So rifle casters. Or is he playing that tier three? Oh, he could be playing, but then you don't really need a blacksmith this early. If you go one base air. Jimmy could try to popularize it. I have never seen it very successful. Are under but you can buy some time with an Archmage. Prevent creeping. It's only level 1 TC with Aura, so no disable, no crowd control at all. So what's it gonna be? Sanctum or weird tier 3? Somehow, somewhere. And nicely dancing around each other. 
Fassi again distracting from real quote-unquote damage. But since the green camp is gone in the north, it's not that easy to level up the TC anymore. Sanctum it is, so rifle cast is confirmed. Once the Mountain King is out, this will accelerate quite a bit. Oh, sweet blocks by Sock. Very lovely. Fly, of course, known to losing his heroes or for losing his heroes. But it's only level one and it's only a fast year, so that's all quite fine. Stomp or wave is the question now. Usually wave when you go double beastery with raiders. That doesn't seem to be the case here. And fly, this feels a little clueless. But there's no level 2 water elementals at the moment, or no level 2 aura, I think it's gonna be, because there are shaman already, as you saw. And Mountain King, he wants to brawl, wants to reduce the number of headhunters, maybe take a shaman out here and there. <coughs> but without breakers, it's tricky. Fly is finding a nice way to level, despite Sock being so close. Here's the disable against the Storm. There was an approach to go for the hero here. Nicely defended by Sock with that Storm Bolt. That was crucial. And in the base, long rifles <coughs> makes life easier for the human. Priest coming for the spell. But this is a late, late, late breaker build, if ever. Forces are under attack. Wow, Stomp for creeping. That feels a little insecure. Pull doesn't really work the first time. Levels for Sock are real bad. Well, we're reaching level 3. Level 4. Or plus 4 ring. Cannot allow a lasted here. This must be a Storm Bolt kill, right? Everything is hurt thanks to the wave. And Fly wants to punish this. Is it too late? Is it worth it? Endurance Aura. Oh, how gorgeous. A human army always on the slower side of things. Not with the Endurance Aura anymore. <clears throat> Lightning Shield. Nicely done. Hugs him with Footman. This must be calculated. This must be calculated right. Town Portal gets it. Chain lightning, but not enough as Sock is saving his Mountain King quite nicely. But disrupting the creeping, still only level 1 Mountain King. Endurance Aura is, of course, fantastic. But this was... this was costly. But also, secures his expansion for now. <sighs> Boots and Django. Bullrush, you're right, the Dwarf is a sprinter. You say in Stormbolt, one might say. Oh, Fasia. Careful, mate. You just lost the TP. The priest block. I'm not even sure if that was on purpose. But he gets the kill on a level 2 Fasia. That hurts. That's the Fasia, not part of the fight. That's also extra experience. Is it level 2 aura? Yes, it absolutely is because Stormbolt is so damn good. Headhunter still putting in the work as casters are a little far forward. But down the road, like when you have a Warcraft game and you fight without your heroes, it's never good. And Sork knows this expansion. I gotta get it. And with the Farseer benched and with the TC so low, there's actually quite a decent chance. Oh no. <clears throat> Sork's in the mix as well. Will always be one slow on the TC. 
Now he got level 4. Doesn't affect him too much now because it's Aura too. Fly 40 pop. Expo up. But tower push. The late tier 2 tower push. Under the eyes of Sky. Might break his neck. How do you hold it? There's no way to hold this, right? Expensive, expensive, expensive. Creeping right here with some items, but that costs like 400 gold, three minutes, and accomplished almost nothing. And why not continue pushing with an invo potion against Hero Focus Talk? Knows biggest chances: end snare, stomp, chain lightning, focus. The TC is a beast. He's the strongest asset. Needs to disable it. The Storm Bolt a tiny bit too late, but the TC is in the middle of everything. No follow up with Chain Lightning, so Invul immediately. Far away from the shop for heal potions, but who needs heal potions if you have a long standing Invul and the units that could attack you are stunned? Now, TC is stunned himself. That's the potion for him. Well controlled by Fly. And Sucks pulling back. One more Storm Bolt if he wants to. Shouldn't be enough. It's only level one. He's trying hard. Stomp again. Oh man, if that's a bash. Oh, gets the dwarf up front. What a play by Sock. Firebolt's not hard enough. Sick fight from the two actually. TC is still out of the fight. Invo potion still on the dwarf. Finally level three. For level two wolves as there is only a limited amount of this bull. What a save. Fly usually known for losing his heroes. Not here. Not just yet. But the shop is worth a million gold now. Just for mana potions. Ring value. Right on. Right on Death Eye HC. The ring saved the TC. But how do these fights look if the Mountain King is level 3 soon? A player's force Still not a back. single breaker. Surprising. And that's level 3. And hero focus against Invo Potion, big heal. Maybe even... Uh, I was about to say maybe even Invis, but no, not yet. <coughs> oh man, Creepjack right on. This time the Storm Bolt hits before the first Stomp. Do we have potions? Yeah, we do have potions on the TC. It's basically a war between the Dwarf and the Cow. And so far the Dwarf is doing a hell of a job. But they're still consumables. Oh, Bash again! Gotta be so careful. Stomp on two casters, catching them. Dodges the Storm Bolt point blank. Fly with some sick plays. And now focus fire. Can he get out with a big potion? Yes, so far so good. Magic and piercing damage is ramping up on the grunts and the blocker line is getting more and more diminished. Again, no lightning shield follow up. That's certainly missing. Bash again. And this time there's no saving the TC Mountain King. Barely made it to level 3 just a minute ago, and now level 3.7. That should be game, ladies and gentlemen. So he gets another Storm Bolt, gets the Kodo, gets the Rifleman back. And that's a solid human army. Fly, nice place, but in the grand scheme of things, not powerful enough. Farsia hero loss hurt. Giving the red spot to Sock hurt. And some moments in the fight where well, Sock was just better. Naza, the mayor. Thank you for the 22 month resub. And yeah, holy smokes. Oh, of course, Endurance Aura and True Shot. Are you kidding me? That's insane. 
for this kind of army. So we mask not shabby. How's the item situation here though? Heal scroll, invo potion, second heal scroll. Suck was Richie Rich just a minute ago. And the TC is still not back. Oh no. Unfortunate spawns. And nice half moon concave. Which is max damage basically. And who knew that you don't even need spell breakers in this matchup. <clears throat> oh man, if the TC won't come out, this is definitely game. He has no resources to buy him from the tavern, I think. Close, close, close. Mm, not enough though. Okay, TC is back. But what now? The fight is all over the place. Trying to catch some rifles. The storms were okay, but that was the only one. No shop for a mana potion. What's this cow gonna do? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. There's Invis now against potential hero focus. Level 5 Archmage and that is back-to-back -back wins for Korea. And Fly calls the GG. Old school orc wasn't enough to threaten here. But nice game. Fly shows he still has some skills, some very cool highlight worthy moments. But in the end, the W goes to suck. And that means that China has to win all remaining games if they want to still win this. Colorful was successful so far. And he's up next as well. Up against the successful Focus, who has said didn't lose a single or only one single series against Night Elf in the past two months. And that was versus Moon, so. Really good track record for Focus, also versus Colorful recently. And then of course we might have the deciding... 4-on-4. Four four. <coughs> That's something that is not in uh, my automated vocabulary at the moment, so... Yeah, but next is the last remaining one-on-one -on -one, and then we either have the decision as everything now is match points Korea. We will play out everything though. Or we go with a tie 2-2 score into the last uh, match here. 2-1 and one for South Korea and that is match points for them in the $6,700 competition. The two star players now facing each other. It is Colorful versus Focus. Colorful, extraordinary versus Orc. Focus on the other side, also extraordinary versus Night Elf. The uh, unstoppable force against the immovable object, as it seems, as we decide the one on one section of this China versus Korea match on Echoals. And this is already super interesting. We got a demon hunter, Ancient of War on Echo Owls versus Blade Master Grunt plus Shot. Risky to go for the mercenary camp. Would be great against the keeper. Demon hunter is not here yet. Focus. Trying to interrupt this, put as much damage on the Ancient of War as possible to force more repair. That means more resources spent, and the later the tech timing is. But Demon Hunter arrives, and with that should be safe. If he allows the last hit for focus, this game is almost over. But no, Mana Burn is ready. Pendant of Energy, a little unlucky. Blade Master comes in though. Oop, Archer down. Oh man. At least level 2, at least mercenary camp access, but this is not going too well for Colorful at all. Plate Master was rather greedy, didn't sell the town portal. He's not willing to wait for the voodoo launch it seems, otherwise he could have gone for like healing and speed scrolls. But yeah, harassing Blade Master it is. Just like back in the old days, and now Colorful is up to you 
to save as many wisps as possible. Usually he's very, very good at that. Put some damage in. Works out as well. And then the Blade Master is a little underwhelming. So will we see a Talon play on Echo Isles after not seeing it on Last Refuge? That would be quite something. So these exchanges, if these heroes go head to head, will of course be won by a Demon Hunter due to better stats and evasion. <clears throat> But it's also more freedom for grunts in the absence of a keeper. They give up quite a bit with that. Grunt was still arresting the sheep block! Insane critter AI. But yeah, Grunt's not creeping. Blade Master, very underleveled, but that was something that didn't bother him in his first match against Night Elf today for focus. So things calm down a little. Arches are very, very fragile. You don't want to lose them against the Blade Master early. You want to creep a little bit a while being safe, though. And yeah, you need critical strike if you're an orc. That's for sure. This grunt will never reach its target. It's like the carrot in front of a horse at a race. <coughs> Oh wow, this is something we usually see from a Blade Master. Sitting that Ogre Magi in the middle. With a circlet. Or if if, if the Night Elf does it, there's archers here, but that's not the case. So big consumable, big invul potion, just like that. For colorful. He knew he had some time. As mana was low, and he couldn't replenish it in time. Holy Sai Sonic! 2500 bits? Are you nuts, mate? Give me that 50k bit badge. Let's go, man. Let's go. That is a lot of money, my friend. <clears throat> I thank you. So. Beastmaster second, clearly indicating talents. Bond, thank you very much for the 22 month resub. Hee hee hee. Is it enough damage again? Only the circlet. No claw, no gloves. Nicely putting the wisps in front. Now they're ready for repair. So we can't do too much. Focus, no pillage. Just rushes over. Not creeping the TC might be a big mistake if he's not getting much damage done here. Six saves by Colorful. Berserker to the back, Shadow Priest to the back. And as I said many, many times in the span of my casting quote unquote career, Night Elf in this matchup versus Talents is not very hero dependent. They don't need to creep, but an orc without a level 2 shockwave. Good luck. It's just brute force, raider, grunts. I wouldn't be too surprised if that's not even. Like walkers. Blade Master though. Oh boy. Might be sacrificed. <clears throat> so brute force orc play. Raider, grunts, try to pillage and delay tier 3. So you don't even have to face Cyclone. If there's no Cyclone, nice to deny, then of course you don't need this spell. Double Rax Raiders. And now the clock is ticking in favor of Colorful. Oh my, <clears throat> he's tier 3 already. Master training has started. Talon's coming out. It's not too many. And he is supply blocked now for... Wait. Where's the next moon will? Is he not rebuilding the next moon will? He has no lumber. Now he does. Oh, that's late. Okay. 
So in hindsight, this aggressive play, this push, did accomplish a lot. And now the totems are coming, but... For Focus to have this spell, and being able to fight head to head... That's tricky. That's really tricky. But he played this map a million times, he played this matchup a million times. He probably knows what to do. He still doesn't have pillage. Unbelievable. Keep a third instead of Tinker. Alright, there will be a reason for that. And Snare, focus on the Shadow Priest. But there's barely, there's nothing to dispel really, so that's not the greatest value. Keeper is fragile! Getting out of here and Colorful is safe, saving all sort of the talents. Orb up. Good attack and yeah, just race up to 50 pop. And then try to claim shop control somehow. Heal scroll is up already, but the invo potion, that's where it's at. We still have that big invo potion here. Maybe Colorful was thinking, well, he has double Beastery Raiders. He won't have this spell. So the Keeper can be very in in impactful, but... And that's still true, though. He will have Walkers. He will have AoE Dispel, but it's a very expensive Dispel compared to Purge. So the Keeper can have value, especially when you try to maneuver your TC into a position where you can hit the best Shockwave. Oh, yeah, Shockwaves. But um, then it's Entangled. We don't have the level 3 anyway, so Focus doesn't want to fight. He doesn't have the necessary number of walkers. This is Burroughs on a silver platter, by the way. If Colorful is attacking with all his damage with the summons, with the magic damage, yeah, Focus will never ever build anything ever again. But there's Vision, he can react if he wants to. Due to that inventory, he knows that there is a TP. And TP forced. No moon wells. Mana looks quite okay though, so this should be fine. Depends on shop control and the first fight. If Focus wins the first fight, his level spiral out of control. He'll take a lot of mana away. We have a basically a one for one trade, but Raiders of course more expensive. He can kill the Burrows. Oh, reinforced defense is upgrade. I did not see that. Reinforced defense is upgrade. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> Was that finished when I last looked at these Burrows? It's warm, everybody. It's really warm. Uh, maybe Fata Morgana or something. One second after. See? I was already somewhere else with my train of thought. We moved on. Just finished when you stopped looking. Ah, see? Little oversight. Little oversight. With these replays, uh, the overlay doesn't work, so I don't see... The upgrades, etc. So hot that there's illusions. Right on! We trade town portals again, and Colorful is portaling so early that Focus can't really get <coughs> too much value from Pillage. Oh. Yeah, he has Pillage then, right? Should be. What's the items? No 
Heal scroll. Okay. That's quite something, guys. Both are going for mercenaries now. The piercing gem is just too good. And the entangle, as you can see, is worth it. Put the walker out of position. And kill them right away. And Focus's plans are not coming to fruition, really. No invo potion on the blade. Oh, that shockwave was sweet, though. Was the last one because of cyclone and mana burn. But yeah, lack of heal scroll. Clearly, clearly noticeable. Invo potion to save the keeper. Stormy times on Echo Isles. As the raiders are finding nice targets. Two more about to die as there's a big. Dispel, Berserker Falls 2, focus with a super solid fight if you ask me, 58 pop here, 15 supply lead. There is some potential to catch up for Colorful because this matchup has a little bit of a rubber band effect because the Night Elf never goes above 50. And <laughs> the race for the items is on. Can focus still afford these items? Yes he can, despite being in upkeep. That's big. Invo potion to the blade this time. Really big. Might need a mana potion on the TC as well. The clarity does the job for now though. A player's forces are under attack. Fairies? Huh. Interesting to say the least. Also still the town portal. It's not too many casts going on. Taker, thank you for the raid, mate. Hope you had a nice stream, buddy. We are casting the replays of China versus Korea from this very weekend. It's currently match points for Korea. If Focus wins this, they win the uh, match, but we also have a 4-on-4 four four coming where Sky and Moon will be playing. 100 Raiders exactly, right on the dot, Mr. Taker, right on the dot. Almost as many as Focus this game. <laughs> oh, Sasuke, you're so funny sometimes. Most of the times. Almost always. Can you break focus at his own home turf with instant reinforcements? Even bad riders now. Could dodge the explosion though. So, item check again. One heal scroll. On colorful. One invo, one heal scroll. On focus. Are we in for base race? Then good luck. Base racing? With talents against a million raiders. See, one one burrow down, and you guys said he could never kill them. Liars. Decent push, I'd say, but little problematic whenever you town port that the TC can throw a wave, but that only affected two talents. Colorful's army is really, really, really small. V pretty uh, simple execution by Focus. Of course, it takes a lot to survive into that stage, but brute force raiders into walkers. He always had a lot. And Colorful can't really catch up, as it seems. Still the beast mode invo potion if he needs it. Oh, the dedos were nice. So are the ants there. So is the heal scroll. Focus with a sick fight. <coughs> Super sick fight. Sorry for the coughing. These raiders are tearing everything apart. Heroes don't make a difference at all. And the raiders at this fight. They are the heroes. They did the heavy lifting. And there's nothing left for colorful really. 
three raiders about to drop. That's night nice supply. A kingdom for another heal scroll. Maybe focus has to retreat now, but boah, that was sick damage done. But if he overcommits, there's a solid chance for m -m -m multi kills for Colorful, especially with this Demon Hunter. But if there's end snare, you can't move. Shrub, shrub. The bondage kings of, no of Warcraft. Okay, is this it? Beastmaster about to drop! There we go! TCTP's out! Oh, the micro by focus! Loses one raider in the process, but how do you bounce back from this? 40 pop only. A player's force is TC is getting closer and closer to five. This looks bad, real bad. Paralo, thank you for the 44 month three sub. That's a long time going straight for the four years. And of course it was also heroes. Not only a lot of units and with that a lot of mana, but also the experience and oh no focus is just a blink of an eye faster double heal scroll yes please the worst possible moment for colorful to appear raider lockdown critical strikes coming in no way to get out and that is a triple kill gg and korea wins the competition Three to one at the moment. Could still be a four and one. But yeah, Focus seals the deal. Claiming half the maps in the one-on-one. -on -one. one against 15 Sway. One against Colorful. And he is a Night Elf Slayer. Just like Lin. These two guys seem almost undefeatable. Colorful was able to defeat Lin in AWL. But focus too strong in this best of one. On an unusual map with unusual builds, but gotta be ready for that. Damn. Didn't like the keeper decision really. It felt like a little bit of a trap. Um, maybe expecting it to be full out base race when focus was already transitioning. I mean, the radar control was just way too sick. So many kills. Usually, the TC is the weapon of mass destruction. Here it was raiders. Clean and simple. But yeah, cool strat. Not going robot style into Raider Walker immediately. But no, figure it out. He got the time to go double beast three, mass raiders, get some resources with pillage, slow down the night elf. That's exactly what he did. Damn focus. Really impressed. Three wins in a row for Korea. Korea, Korea. But there's still a shot for another point for China. As we have the 4-4 four and four coming up. It is Sky, Fly, Colorful and 15 Sway versus Moon, Focus, Sock and Lukile. All right, let's go into the last uh, match between these players, between these two teams, between China and Korea. We got the return of Sky alongside Fly, Colorful and 15 Sway versus Moon, Focus, Sock and uh, Lukael. So let's get it on. Four on four action. There's quite a bit of hype about this game mode. I am not feeling this too much, I gotta say, but hey. Anyway, wait, is the Observer not working? Let me try this again. Are under it did work a second ago. Ah! There you go. There you go. We got Lucy with a Dreadlord bottom left-hand side. Ghoul opener. I have no clue about 4 and 4, by the way. We have Sock on the Korean side with an Archmage opening. Panda first by Moon. Who of course plays in Night Elf and uh, Focus with Orcs, so everybody's sticking with their main races. We got the Return of Sky! Look at this in the upper right hand side. Alongside... wait, who's playing Undead then? Colorful... Fly... So 15 Sway is playing Undead, huh? So 
This seems like an even match because nobody has two humans in their team. I heard that's unbeatable. <laughs> <coughs> Joking, of course. So Farsia, Headhunters, Archmage, Footman, Panda, and Dreadlord to hero choices that we won't see too much in one-on-one. -on -one. Little bit of harass. Fly might be a little exposed and... How good is he still, the two-time WCG champion? Crystal Ball maybe 4-4-4, four, four, and four, not too bad because there's so much to scout. Yeah, feels good to have Sky back. We shouldn't expect too much, I guess. But in 4-4, four, four, coordination might be uh, more important than individual execution. A player's forces are under attack. As long as you don't make any big mistakes. So, Farsia gets another kill, nicely leveled, both of or both teams focusing on expansions. It's pretty similar to FFA, I would say, where we have the big FFA Masters League semi-final this very evening at around 8 p.m. 15 sway. Oh, Farsia died. Okay, this is a little more stressful for me than I thought, are under as so much is happening. Whoopsie, fly, in typical fly fashion, losing the hero, a little fan service. And this is a combined red spot creep here. Doesn't look like the toughest camp. But it's a lot of units, but it's also... This should be a fairly decent creep, I'd say. So is there a counter expansion? No, both seemingly... Well versed. Of course, Sock plays as almost as, as many 4 and 4 as Shocky does in Europe. But man, this is quite not a death ball, but a big army. They see them coming. As they can creep this uncontested. Dreadlord really weak at the moment. Was focusing on economy a little more. And focus, good luck holding this. Blue Drake, nice. So slow on all the workers. Focus is home, defending this, but against three units of their opponents. Fasi needs an invo potion immediately. Sky, do you still have the surround skills? Nope. Not just yet. But man, Focus is suffering quite a bit. Collective TP. Big potion. All the damage thrown at Moon. Oh no, and Fl Sky gets the block out. Killing the panda eventually right next to the shop. Moon is suffering hard here. We also have Blizzard. Lots of cold, but the Dreadlord Carrion Swarm. Man, this is wild. Everybody is losing everything, it seems. Blue Drake saved to the side so that he doesn't give too much experience. And Sky, careful, mate. <clears throat> this might be a TP right away, but no, no surround follow up by Lucy. And speed scroll. <clears throat> this must be the TP. Man, this is a lot of mana. Archmage still surrounded, gets out, and Sky survives. But that push could have been way worse if they don't respond immediately. Now there's probably a lot of rebuilding going on. Moon with two bases. We have Sock with two bases, Lucy with two bases. Only Focus is missing on the other side. Sky, of course, with an expansion himself on the way to tier 2. Two bases for 15 sway as well. Colorful tier 3, of course, on the way. And also fly. Not expanding at all. So it seems like seven bases on both sides. And there's still lots and lots to creep. Item-wise, I don't really know if anyone has a big advantage, as I, once again, don't see the overlay here too much. Flute is, of course, very nice. AoE seems to be very strong, I'd say. <clears throat> Lucy making his way across, getting a little bit of vision. Colorful, careful, mate. Isn't it 7 to 6? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4... Five, six, seven. Nope, seven, seven. As colorful as a second base as well. <clears throat> Only orcs can't expand, apparently. 
So, next fight brewing. <clears throat> As we have the Dark Wizard here. Big creep. Throwing everything at it. TC gets it. Stomp. Can he save him? No. I think the creeps got the last hit, though. And Headhunter's triple kill by Sky. He's using his footman really well, as long as they're alive against the Carrion Swarm. Oh my god, this is so chaotic. Is there anything else going on on the map? No, it seems to be this big fight. Bears are coming with Redo. There's not much dispel here, so Roar and Redo very, very good. Colorful also with the True Shot are off for all the range. And Roar. Oh man, you gotta be careful with the heroes here. Lich for 15 sway, stomp again. And the dust seem to settle for China a little bit. Man, that Dreadlord is having quite some impact and it's not gonna get weaker. Pally for Sock getting nuked. Sock probably the most experienced player here. Reach to what a sick save the Pally dies. Was about to say for his sins, but of course the Paladin has no sins. Except Arthas, but was he really a full-fledged Paladin already? Um, not a lore nerd. Double kill on archers. Oh boy, Moon is uh, taking quite a beating here, right? So China marching forward with bears now against so many buffs as well. Can they hold now? Moon's expo fortified by Sock. That's of course his expertise. Blizzard from far behind. Getting rid of all the wisps. But backstep coming in with Focus and Moon. Joint forces. I guess Lucy has to heal up a little bit to get more carrion swarms out. But they are sandwiched now with Garks. What a wild fight, especially without Zoom. Oh, we got Stasis Trap! Oh, what a beauty! One of the best Stasis Traps I've seen in a long time. And there's another one. This one might be cancelled though. No, lets it through. Carry and swarm again. Panda save. And that sandwich might cost China. If the uh, Korea can uh, keep the pressure up. Feet starting to hurt for 15 sway. Ghouls also taken out easily with all that AoE. I have no idea what's going on. Absolutely no clue. Kind of surprised how Sky is hanging in there. I think he lost most of his army. But the hero is still there. Pardon. him. Whoopsie. Colorful. And yeah, that was a little too much. A little too ambitious once they're getting sandwiched. Apple 3 way K. Thank you for the tier 1 sub. Nine months already. Much love. What is Sky playing? Archmage, Blood Mage. Probably... Double AoE with Blizzard Flame Strike then. <sighs> but we got Sock with Griffins, we got Raw Redo, we got Garks as anti air. It feels like. And of course, Dazz's Traps. So it feels like. Korea took the lead now after this fight. Even though the fight at the middle didn't look good for them at all, feels like <clears throat> Sky, with only a handful of mortar casters, uh, can't really creep too well, which is definitely slowing him down. Colorful lost the hero, not too great. Dreadlord third only for 15 sway, who's not of main undead. And it's cool to see walkers using their spells. Walkers? No, Doctors. <clears throat> too bad there's no zoom. I know, mate. It makes casting not too easy. <laughs> so, roared up. Focus levels really weak. Lucy plays Dreadlord solo, right? I think I haven't seen anything else before. We got Focus with an expansion now. We got Fly with an expansion now. So in that regard, they're even. <coughs> oh, 
Ooh, moon in trouble again. As we have sleep. Are there enough units to surround? Or is 15 space block good enough? Well, who needs to block if you can just eviscerate your opponent? So that's the town portal. And a little push. Colorful seeking revenge against focus. Now shaman as well, man. Doctors and shaman. Nice to see that. A town is under siege. A player's forces are under attack. <laughs> ah, Sky. Still with the big brain plays. Even 15, 16 years later. Oh yeah. Flare into mortar bombardment into blizzard and flame strike. Boom, that's an expo gone. But you gotta be careful here. Fly's main base is in trouble. Uh, Sock town portals home. Everybody portals home. And now Sky in a little bit of trouble. Has to TP as well. All, all his units very, very fragile. Oh, Lucy's Dreadlord has fallen somewhere. There's a little bit too much action to capture and everything. Handsome Anastas, thank you for the five month. Thank you for the great content, guys. Thank you. Sky under pressure again. They don't spare him. Despite not playing for like seven to eight years, except some, some ladder streams here and there. They know he's the weakest link and they will pressure him. That's for sure. But he kind of provoked it right if you do mortar and blizzard and flame strike stuff yeah 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 for sure you provoke this thank you c2k for the 17 month resub love to walker 3 and the back to walker crew thank you mate oh boy this fight is gonna be massive <clears throat> if not for a town portal. There's another one at the bottom. Shadowhunter just dead in seconds. Of course, they all have lots and lots of gold. Sock realizes the strength of late game griffins. And a frost worm in the Nettie's version, I'd say. So they have their space in 4 and 4. Cool. Oh, man. Seems like two fights at the same time. Mountain Giants in. Breath of Fire. Massive. This might be a pre decisive fight. Oh my god, this army for Korea. Bloodlust, Inner Fire. Everything, no chance. Absolutely no chance. They gotta get out. Trying to save the town portals, but look at the damage. That's insane. Roared up as well. All the best buffs in the game on Team Korea. I can't believe it's 2022 and I can uh, see Sky play. Right? That's fantastic, isn't it? Fly is trying to do some damage, has to TP out now. Killed an Expo. These Griffins. Beasts! Bloodlust, Roar, Inner Fire Griffins. Insane. Colorful won't expand again. Lucy has another base up. Sock is getting another base up. They are really confident now. Pretty much 80 pop across the board, right? Wonder if that's the same for Sky. No. Yeah, Sky is the weak weakest link. And off we go. Next fight, it seems. Sky. Sky in 15th way. How much can you do? DK is safe. Gyros. Take care of the hippos for now. Maybe that enables some worms. Level 3 on the ledge, finally. But oh boy, these stairs are traps. The cast is all exposed. Oh, Sky. That was not your fight to take. But also the backline of Korea decimated. 15 Sway trying to lure his opponent into a little choke, but maybe all that undead AoE can shine. 
There's another fight in fly space. We're gonna take a look real quick because that's pretty sick as well. Lucy with so many frost worms, bat riders unwilling to detonate against all these griffins here. The griffins seem to be enough anti-air. Couple of kills as a follow-up level four TC. Well here, Moon and Focus together marching forward. Defeating Sky and 15 Sway, pulling them apart was a nice touch. And Colorful has to TP out here. This looks very, very good for Korea, I'd say. Once their strat was online, they took control. And Sock calls for the retreat with the international sign B, of course. And yeah, before taking too many losses. In the meantime, Mooncus versus 15 Sway. And you, the, the Chinese youngling is uh, not doing too well here in his own base, I want to say. Needs help, and help is coming. And that forces the retreat this time. In time. Holy moly, 4-4 four four is quite crazy. Panda fell! Oh, okay, so much for a retreat in time. Moon again, man. Moon is... I don't know, li seems a little rusty. Mucus. Lucy's next base, not too efficient, I want to say, but we do have level 6 now. So on top of the bloodlusted inner fire roar griffins, we also have infernals now. Yeah, that's, that's not your base. Focus took this, still the confidence. Sock is erecting another base too. Mastelli could obviously change a lot. Oh, do we drop the base? Not really necessary, but maybe for the style. Once again, fly. Fly's base under attack. The carrion swarm is amazing! And here we drop the base! Oh boy! Big, big, big stun against the entire Chinese army. Detonates quite good. Carrion Swarm insane on this level. And the Infernal already dead. So with all that anti-air, with all the bad riders by fly, they can push this back for now. There's another fight in the north where 15 Sway against Moon, I think, finally survives a fight. And Moon retreating once again. Hex! And that's another kill right there! On the level 4 pally. That's the Devotion Aura gone. And 15 Sway has some time to attack the base. And maybe the joint forces of... What is it? Fly and Colorful can kill this base finally. China back? Question mark. Oh, look at the panda for like the fourth time. Yeah, it really feels like Moon is not too used to 4 and 4 damage. That is the base gone, but in the meantime, that is Sock with probably Mass Telly. Because that base is wrecked. No reinforced defenses. No nature's blessing, I mean. So that base wrecked. That base wrecked. Sky is doing some damage with Blood Mage alongside Colorful. And Sock is losing the base once more. Holy hell, this game is so crazy. Just expand again, but S Fly sees it immediately. Sky's base now under attack with an Archmage with a Wolf Corruption. Not bad. As Moon is under pressure. But Sok is defending well. How long though? There is no big AoE against the Gyros this time. And if there's no Carrion Swarm, this might be the end bat of the Griffins. Bat Rider connecting too. But now Moon is here with the Panda. Full mana. Level 5. Let it burn! Oh my! Gyros is really way too fragile. But they prepared for the detonates here. Panda, don't die for the sixth time. He doesn't. 
And Moon's base finally falling. And we have Tranquility as well. Sky should be in super low supply again. Status trap, not bad. 4 3. Sky's base protected by 15 sway as uh, Sock and Focus are marching forward. There's so much happening. The entire army healed up as Colorful is switching to a lot of mountain giants. What about Sky's main base though? Moon is losing so much. Sock also with another base down. Su Yogu, thank you for the 713 sub, mate. 15 Sway in trouble. Can he save himself? Oh, Hex instant dispel. So nicely done. That took like a split second. Lucy is losing heroes. Where the hell is this all happening? Sock desperately trying to defend. Everybody's losing everything. Sock staffs out the hero this time. Level 6. Finally for Sky. He can use mass teleport now. So much more mobility in this game. Level 6 TC as well. I thought Korea would carry this home. With all the momentum they have. Earthstorm, fire by moon. Can be dispelled. Uh, partly at least these days not these days was always possible but everything but the earth panda yeah I thought once all the tier 3 upgrades were there Korea takes this gets the momentum but okay nasty big fight 15 sway can't lose the DK it's too much mobility but the Dreadlord is on the menu again! Did that stomp not hit? Ah, what's focus the stomp, right? Oh my, that Dreadlord, this time he dies, explodes into a million bats. And it's not looking good for Korea with all these hero losses. All blue, all China. Garks are gone. The anti-air combo of gyros and bats seems to be insane, even though Sky is losing a hundred million gyros per fight as long as the bats are up it's totally fine totally fine so many destros main base by moon down expo killed by a bad rider as well no second base by moon we all thought Sky is the wicked sling, but it was Moon feeding with a lot of hero losses. Sock trying to go for a counter kill, but there's not gonna be a TP at all. Man, fly with the bats! They had so much value with liquid fire. Whoopsie! It's a little oversight, so I think chance for big orange bird are like nothing. Thank you, Alpha Machine, for the 4 month resub. Yeah, first as anti-air, then as siege units. Well done. So Moon is out, isn't he? Pretty much. Sock saves the expo with another mass teleport from all the one, two bats he got. Creepjack, Creepjack, 6 p.m. Oh man, that panda dies for the millionth time. How many panda losses this game? Focus base. Torn to pieces and there's no real counter-attack coming. Nothing that really threatens Team China. Yeah, 15 Sway's base. All right, but if you wipe out focus, take another base. Hi, Yasis! Thank you for the sub. And now he's saving his main. Or flies main. Sock. No big surprise that he's the strongest player on the team. A Biggest 4 and 4 experience in all of Team Korea. Yeah. 
but then take out the carry. If one guy has the potential to ruin your game, take him out. We're in for a little bit of a base race, it seems. But the panda dies again. Oh my god. How much XP did that panda feed away? Moon didn't really feel it today, it seems. It's seven for Sock. And it's just... The rampage just continues. I think almost all main buildings are gone for... Korea. That's pretty sick. It really looked like Korea would take it, but they kind of missed their timing. Tried to brute force fly his base and that didn't work. Oh boy, this army is gigantic. Soaks up a lot of AOE and here comes fly and this is nuts. This is so crazy. I have no clue what's going on. Everything is happening. I'm pretty sure Moon's panda will fall. Somewhere? Oh my god. Oh, I have, I have no idea what happens. There's still a couple of griffins here. Um, for now at least, the AoE. Sock is losing absolutely everything. Autumn falls. All right. Still lots of anti-air. Big bad voodoo. Yeah, everything is untouchable and Korea calls for the game. Sky in his show match comeback wins it. Seemed to be the liability, but no, it was Moon. Bought a bit of time and eventually succeeded with all the gyros in the world. Nice to see that. 15 Sway also, I'm not too sure. Like he... I've never seen him play Undead. That was solid. And the combo worked out. Just like that. So the entire match is won by Korea. But China gets the 4-4 victory. Sky gets the victory. 4-2 in the end. $4,000 for Team Korea. $2,500... $2,700 for Team China. So... At, at, at least they got that. At least they got that. That was fun, everybody. That was fun. So... Uh, I got a refill. My holy. And maybe grab an apple. And then we play a letter game. And then it's creepjack time. And then we have the... Um, FFA Masters League... Semi-final. Is that a good plan? Do you like that plan? Let me know.